Revelation 1751 From the 26th of December 1940 Imperfection Free will Justice Only that is important in earthly life which contributes to the redemption of the soul. The prayer for strength for this will always be answered. God's love tries to present your soul's hardship to you humans by letting the body feel earthly hardship and worries. But its sufferings are minimal in comparison to the agonies of an unredeemed soul, and again, the agonizing state is wanted by the soul itself, that is, the being itself brought it about and must also overcome it itself. No being can do this for the other, it can only help it through love. This is what people don't want to understand, that God is not the originator of agony and suffering but the being itself, but that God cannot arbitrarily end the state of suffering despite his greater than great love, because then something immature would remain which would have no justification to live in happiness in eternity. In order to be allowed to dwell in God's presence, the being must be perfect and its free will must have overcome everything imperfect. The imperfection, however, was its own fault in that free will turned to the adversary of perfection. In order to become perfect, the being must turn its free will towards the perfect again. If it does not do so, nothing but an agonizing state can be its fate, for it is then distant from God, and this means suffering and agony for the being. God is merciful, kind and loving, but also just. In his love, kindness and mercy he can indeed open up all possibilities for the being to develop into perfection, but he cannot bypass justice by sparing the being suffering and giving it eternal glory in an imperfect state. But neither can he let the being become perfect without its will, since perfection cannot be thought of without free will. Every state of suffering, whether on earth or in the beyond, is only a concomitant of imperfection, because at the same time it should be the means to remedy it. If the human being's prayer is directed towards the soul's state of maturity, then the human being will receive unmeasured strength and it will be easy for him to overcome earthly suffering, for then he will have grasped the meaning and purpose of it. Therefore, don't think so much about what seems unbearable for the body. Think about the fact that the soul has to suffer far more from its unfree state and try to help it by requesting the strength from God in prayer to be able to assist it, that is, that you do everything to ennoble your being, that you are lovingly active even in adversity and suffering, that you thereby loosen the bonds around the soul, so that now the bonds of the body, the suffering, can also be loosened and peace is granted to you inwardly and outwardly. For God does not send suffering upon you in order to subjugate you, but in order to free you. Amen.